Right now, get scary good deals on select ring cameras and doorbells. See who's there. Keep your scaredy cats company. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. I'll be home soon. And protect your crypt from the real monsters. Oh, come on. The sign says take one. Save big on select ring devices right now at ring.com. Welcome back, everybody. It's Monday, September 30th, 2024. Born on this date in 1924, writer Truman Capote, who was born in New Orleans but spent part of his youth in Monroeville. In 1954, NBA player John Drew of Redenburg. Today, let's talk about Helene, the voter rolls, and a 100-year-old building that's been condemned. My name's Ike Morgan, and we're down in Alabama. Last week, we had all kinds of concern over powerful Hurricane Helene's violent landfall in Florida's Big Bend area. Now, as the weekend unfolded, the big storm rolled inland, dumping rain and causing damage in Georgia, South Carolina, then eastern Tennessee, and western North Carolina. Now, all told, according to Associated Press reports, there have been hundreds of water rescues, including stories of people being plucked off roofs, millions without power, and a death count near a hundred and rising as rescue teams fan out. In South Carolina, there were at least 25 deaths, making it the deadliest hurricane there since 1989's Hugo. North Carolina may have gotten the worst of it. It's seeing its worst flooding in a century. The Spruce Pine community took more than two feet of rain from before the storm ever showed up last Tuesday through this past Saturday, and supplies were being airlifted into the Asheville area. AL.com's Josie Howell reports that Alabama first responders are joining the efforts in North Carolina. According to the Prattville Fire Department, its crew, along with Swift Water Rescue technicians from Hoover, Vestavia Hills, Mountain Brook, Calera, and Mobile, were in the Tar Heel State. The U.S. Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit over the Alabama Secretary of State's efforts to remove non-citizens from voting rolls this close to an election, reports AL.com's Howard Koplowitz. As one might expect, if you're not a citizen of the U.S. and resident of Alabama, you're not allowed by law to register to vote here. And federal law makes it a crime for non-U.S. citizens to vote in a federal election. Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen announced on October 13th a program to remove ineligible voters from the voter rolls. That was 84 days before the November 5th election. And that, argues the DOJ, is a problem because the National Voter Registration Act of 1993 restricts systematic list purges to more than 90 days before the election. The DOG says that A removal program could make mistakes, confuse voters, and remove eligible voters. Birmingham's 101-year-old Bankhead Towers, where Alabama football teams once stayed before ball games at Legion Field, has been condemned by the city, reports AL.com's Greg Garrison. The Crimson Tide stayed in the building when it was a hotel during Bear Bryant's early years with the program. This summer, during the MLB at Rickwood baseball game, Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson said he lived in the Bankhead Towers during his 1967 season with the Birmingham A's after threats were made to burn down the apartment he shared with white teammates. Bankhead Towers has had problems before and went through $3 million worth of renovations in 2004. City spokesman Rick Journey said its current issues include fire, building, and housing code violations. Current residents of the building are elderly or disabled. The former president made it to the Alabama-Georgia game, in case you hadn't heard about that. Now, how you feel about that event is undoubtedly tied to how you felt about pretty much everything else since 2016. Former U.S. Senator Doug Jones criticized Donald Trump's decision to be at the game, arguing that Vice President and Trump campaign opponent Kamala Harris was campaigning, quote, where it mattered, 
while Trump was here in Alabama, certainly a done deal red state. Meanwhile, current U.S. Senators Katie Britt and Tommy Tuberville joined Trump in the box seats. It was a bit of a surreal scene, no matter what side of the election or ball game you were on, as TV cameras showed them joined by the likes of Kid Rock, Herschel Walker, Hank Williams Jr., and John Daly. Now, Herschel and Bo Cephas, I suppose, made it a bipartisan group in the Alabama-Georgia sense. While being in Tuscaloosa didn't physically put him in a swing state, you can bet Trump knew he was in front of a national TV audience and a huge viewership out of Georgia, which is considered a swing state this year. Meanwhile, CNN reported that the Harris camp planned to have a plane fly over Bryant-Denny Stadium with a banner that read, Trump's punning on second debate. But according to the New York Times, that flight was canceled because of the weather. And that kind of brings us full circle. Y'all have a great week. We're going to be back here again tomorrow. Until then, come by and see what we're doing anytime you want to on the internet at AL.com. Hello, my fellow Alabamians. I want to take a quick break to talk about something that I know y'all are into because you listen to this podcast, the role of news in your daily routine. Well, starting off the day informed is a long-held practice that started with newspapers and coffee and has evolved to podcasts like this one and driving to work. But if you miss the feeling of sitting down with in-depth local reporting, Consider subscribing to the Huntsville Times, Birmingham News, or Mobile Press Register Digital Editions. By subscribing, you'll get a new daily digital edition in an email link, or you can use an app to download the new edition every day on your smartphone or tablet. You also get exclusive access to stories written for our subscribers. Down in Alabama listeners... Get your first month free by going to al.com slash digital subscription slash exclusive and enter the promo code DIA24 down in Alabama 24. You get that. It's just $10 a month after that to support the reporting that changes laws and lives in our state. Thank you for your support.